you're clearly not eating enough and you need to eat more and then you may gain. <sighs> I was a school teacher for 11 years and I was a special needs teacher for one year and I get it, not everyone learns at the same rate. Coach Greg, and today I'm going to be responding to the morons in the subreddit Greg Doucette thread or over 9,000 mosquitoes. I mean, subs, followers, not all mosquitoes, but lots. They're making comments. I'm going to respond. And so I just recently posted a video on main gaining to end all videos on main gaining. Finally cleared the air, made it extremely simple for everyone. Thought even the morons would get it. Figured it was case closed, be all end all. Read the comments, close to a thousand already. Everyone got it. On my YouTube thread, everyone got it. Made sense, sense Coach Greg. I know what to do now. Everyone, but not on subreddit. I was talking to editor Steve about it. He said, Greg, you realize these are like kids? So I didn't understand that subreddit is mostly teenagers, young kids, possibly tweens. When I was a kid, we called tweens between 12, 13, 14, like young adolescents. Can't expect them to know as much as people in their 20s and 30s that have experience in training. Thunshot says, I felt like shit trying to eat at maintenance and train hard enough to gain muscle. I increased my calories by 200 and noticed more energy in the gym. Perfect example. I am so glad you wrote this comment because I can now explain to you exactly what happened. So in the video, I used Abby Rainier as an example as she was trying to maintain too low a body fat level and felt like garbage, had to up her calories, increase her body fat because she was too lean to main gain. The video covered three scenarios. One scenario, you're overweight. You can lose weight and then main gain. Second scenario, you're at the weight you want to be. You're healthy, feel good, like Coach Greg. You main gain from there. Third scenario, you are too lean, not eating enough. That's you. That was Abby right here. That's Coach Greg every single time he does a bodybuilding show. That's every single IFBB pro bodybuilder in the world. Every single person that cuts down to 4 or 5% body fat, Chris Bumstead, all the Mr. Olympias, everyone. We are starving when we diet down to 4% body fat. We are too lean to main gain. That's how you feel. Just because we feel like that at 4, 5, 6%, you could feel like that at 15%. So you felt like garbage the same way that I felt like garbage. So I can relate. I don't want you to feel like that. So you then upped your calories by 200. You increased calories, increased body fat, felt healthier, and after you gained the weight, now you can main gain. So if you sound like this guy, eat more. You are in the scenario where you're too lean, you might be anorexic, might have body dysmorphia, you might just not be eating enough. You're trying to live up to society's expectations to be shredded, too shredded, too shredded for your own good. I coach tons of people like this. They want to have full six pack ripped, shredded. They want to be gym shark athletes. Pressure to look good is strong. It's too strong and you're not eating enough and you're trying to main gain because coach Greg said to main gain, but you didn't listen to the entire video. You didn't watch and understand what he explained. I explained if you're too lean, eat more. After you finish winning the Olympia and you're 4% body fat, you're Chris Bumstead, you then eat more until you're at maintenance level. Chris is probably 9 or 10% body fat in the off season. He can't maintain 4. If he tried to, he'd make a video. Hi, it's Chris Bumstead. I'm trying to maintain 4% body fat year round. And he would feel like garbage. He wouldn't be able to train hard. Too hard. So he eats more. He increases his body fat until he feels good, then he main gains. Did you think Chris Bumstead continually bulked up and got fatter for nine straight months after the Olympia? No. Competitors, bodybuilders, bikini athletes, after the show's over, they eat more. Their body fats go up. Then once they get at a comfortable level that's healthy, they main gain that percent body fat while slowly adding muscle.
That's how it works. And if you see them quickly adding muscle, it's the PDs. You go on a cycle, you add in the trend, you add in the Debo, whatever. Then they're adding a bunch of muscle. Or if you see them come off cycle, muscle goes down. Doesn't mean they have to gain body fat or lower body fat. So of course, if you notice more energy when you up your calories by 200, it's because you were not eating enough in the first place. You aren't at a position where you should be main gaining. When you have enough energy, that's where you maintain. I'm at 9% body fat and when I get to eight, I don't feel good. I'm on the bike, I'm riding, I lose energy. I'm halfway through a race and I, I feel bad, I feel weak. Then guess what I do? I increase calories till I'm at 9% and I noticed, wow, I always feel good now. Every time I lift weights, I have energy. Every time I'm on a bike, I have energy. But if I wanna maintain 8% or worse, five, I feel worse, I have no energy at all. It sucks. My performance goes to the shitter. So if you're trying to main gain when you're too lean, stop it. Stop the nonsense. When have I ever preached to maintain a physique that's unreasonable for you? How often do I say, imagine your dream physique go halfway there? This is what I'm talking about. When you try to be too shredded, it's not realistic. You feel like garbage. Then you make posts like this. You feel like this guy. You're trying to be too lean. Enough with the nonsense. Do you know how frustrating and annoying it is for me to see day after day people suffering from mental stress trying to be too lean? It pains me. Every day people suffering, suffering with anorexia, trying to look too freaking shredded. They have body dysmorphia. I don't look good. When they look in fact amazing. It is so sad. And I read these comments. People are, oh, they're just hating on Coach Ray. They're not hating on Coach Ray. They don't know better. They don't know who to listen to. They don't know what to do. Main gating is when you're happy and healthy. That is what I want for you. I don't want you to cycle steroids and think you have to look like freaking Mr. Olympia competitors to be happy. I don't want that at all. So frustrating. I don't know how to get this across to you. I don't know how to say it. If you're anorexic, you're too lean, suffering, stop. That is not the time when you main gain. If you're overweight, unhealthy, obese, slowly lose the weight, slowly. Don't crash, diet, and suffer. I'm all for body acceptance, but I want to accept that your body should be healthy. Does that make sense? Why can't you just trust and believe me? If you're overweight, lose the weight slow until you feel healthy and good. If you lose too much weight, you're going to feel like shit. Trust me, 59 bodybuilding shows I've done. You think that was easy? Do you know how much I suffer to get into that shape? But I choose to do it. I don't choose you to do it. I chose to do that because I was good at it. I liked doing it, the challenge. I don't want you to try to be 5% body fat year round. Just because your favorite gym shark athlete is more shredded than you, you do not need to do the same thing. So main gain at a weight you feel good at. If you don't feel good, it automatically means you're not eating enough. Eat more. Be realistic. Have realistic body expectations. Gain a couple percent body fat and then try to main gain. You don't feel good? Eat more again. If it's 20%, 30%, whatever you need to be to feel healthy, normal, main gain at that point. Stop bulking and cutting. It's not healthy. You want to bulk up and then do a mini cut. I hear you. I read the comments. Oh, bulk up and then do a mini cut. That sounds amazing. And I'll tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You're like, no. You know, we want to hear that. We wish we could hear that we could just main gain and gain muscle all year. Yeah, can. You know what you rather hear? You rather hear, I'll go bulk up and then do a mini cut. When you hear that, it sounds like, I'll go bulk up for three months, mini cut two, three weeks. Who doesn't want that? You don't think I want that? 12 weeks, I get to eat more. And then I just do this quick little mini cut, little two, three weeker. So I can eat whatever I want for 12 weeks and then do a little mini cut. No, if you bulk for 12 weeks, you're gonna have to cut for 12 weeks or more. It's not a mini cut. 
It's a cut cut. It's a bulk and cut. If you're doing a mini cut, you didn't bulk. Bulk cut. If you're a bodybuilder like me, you choose to suffer. You choose to die at three, four months to get down to show condition, to be shredded, to suffer through that lack of energy. Everyone gets it. Low sex drive, poor sleep, it's hard. It's like climbing Mount Everest. It's not easy. It's a challenge that you take on for yourself. Normal person shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be yo-yo dieting. Bodybuilders, yo-yo diets, not healthy. Most abused PDs, not healthy. Don't want you to do that. Want you to have realistic expectations. Diet down to a point that you're comfortable. You feel good and healthy. Maybe it's 15%, whatever. Then you maintain. You maintain that for the rest of your life. No bulk, no cut, no mini bulk, mini cut. Just maintain, main gain. Eat at a level that allows you to have the same body fat percent. Slowly add muscle. And yeah, if you bulk up, you gain a little bit more muscle. But when you bulk, you then have to cut. And if you're cutting, you're not gaining as much muscle. Now are you? Think about it. If bulking builds more muscle, cutting builds less muscle. So why not main gain? It's going to give you the same result, except in a healthier way. You'll have the same amount of muscle at the end of your life as if you bulk and cut, but you'll be healthier. You won't have to feel good for just two months of the year. The rest of the time you're bulking, you feel good and happy all the time. It fluctuates in your body weight and body fat that lead to body dysmorphia. When you struggle to get down, then you bulk up and you look at the reflection in the mirror, you see, oh, I gained 10, 20 pounds. I don't like myself anymore. I had time to do a mini cut. So you feel bad about your body. Then you diet. Then you look good again. And you're like, oh, this is great. Then you're like, oh, it's time to do that bulk again. So you bulk up. Then you look in the mirror. Oh, I'm not really happy with myself anymore. Body dysmorphia. You ever heard of it? How do you think it develops? It develops from bulking and cutting. So stop it. Exactly. And with that may come a little extra fluff along with muscle. You can then mini cut when appropriate. Bullshit, it's a cut, it's a cut. It's not a mini cut. Well, you're gonna fast for 36 hours and you're back to normal. Oh, let's just eat Wendy's and pizza light for three months, mini cut. No. Greg says that isn't main gaining. The guy is a tool on this subject. It's not main gaining, it's bulking, cutting it. You literally just said bulk and mini cut. How's that main gaining? Main gaining is don't bulk, just main gain. Keep your body fat where it is. You have a bit of extra fluff. Why? Why don't you just maintain the 15% that you're happy at and feeling healthy? Why do you have to get fluffy and not like it? Why can't you just look the way you want all the time? Why not? Why do you have to have some times during the year that you feel like you're fluffy and other times that you like it? Just like it all the time. Look at his past videos, three years plus old. He clearly bulked and cut it to get where he's at now in terms of his physique. He doesn't care about adding muscle anymore. Three years ago, I was trying to break world records in powerlifting, getting fat on purpose, force feeding, feeling like shit to gain fat. When you're fat, the bar doesn't have to travel as far down to your chest. As fat, felt like shit. Go for a walk, exhausted. Ride the bike, 15 minutes, tired. You think I like that life? I tried to break the world record and I abused the PDs. I was on the trend baloney sandwiches. Think that was natural? So I looked a lot fatter. Yeah, puff marshmallow man from all the freaking PDs, the steroids. How many videos have I made about this? Oh, we like the old coach Greg better. Yeah, you like the old coach Greg who was on steroids, who had more muscle, who was more shredded doing bodybuilding shows and setting world records. Yeah, I get it. You like me more when I was bigger and more shredded. Same as Michael Hearn. You like him when he's 5% body fat washboard abs saying, don't do cardio. Love that. He's natural. Well, coach Greg can't do it. So you don't like me as much now. Why? Because I have less muscle and I'm not as shredded. Guess why? Went off the PDs. Seven weeks, I was on nothing, was off HRT. I went back on 100 milligrams, now I'm at 120. Because my blood work results showed that my testosterone levels were 400 nanograms per deciliter. Oh, but we don't believe you, you're always on trend since you was 10. Screw off, you're wrong. Just calling it like it is, not my fault, you don't believe me. So I have less muscle and less shredded. And you don't like me as much. So how do you think the normal person feels? that doesn't have the confidence to coach Greg.
Imagine, you like me less now because I don't have as much muscle and I'm not as shredded because I'm only on HRT and you, you're expected to look like me or better. Gym shark athletes, every model looking amazing. Imagine the pressure to look like that. So you want to look like that and you'll do or take anything to get there. You'll risk your health on PDs. You'll bulk and cut. You don't care what it does to you. You don't care it's healthy. You won't do cardio because Michael Hearn told you not to. Because you might have more muscle. But Coach Greg, he's a doorknob. He's an ass wipe. He's a jerk. We don't like him. His videos, they're not about steroids enough anymore. We don't like him. Why? Because I preach having a healthy body image and eating at maintenance and not bulking and cutting? Do you know how annoying it is for me to see all the people that don't get it, that don't get the message I'm trying to portray? He's also on testosterone, so it's much easier to gain muscle. Test does a lot for your energy too. Agreed that a mini cut shouldn't take too long to do. So I'm on steroids, but yet when I was bigger, I was on more steroids. Way more, 10 times more. Way more. I'm on HRT, doctor prescribed, in low doses. I have the blood work to prove I've done videos showed yet. He's also a douche for telling this to newbies. Walk into a gym, say to any pro bodybuilder about main gaining, and be prepared to look like a tool. So you really think that all pro bodybuilders are going to say you have to get fat. Ask Johnny Shreve, I have BB Pro Johnny Shreve. Say, Johnny, I'm 15% body fat. Do you think I should get fatter? Do I need to go on a bulk and then do a mini cut? Or do you think I should main gain? Do you think 15% is enough? See what he says. Or go up to Johnny and say, hi, I just finished a bodybuilding contest. Or I, I'm anorexic. Should I continue to not eat much? Should I continue to starve myself and try to main gain and maintain 4% body fat year round? What do you think he'll say? He'll say, eat more calories, become healthy, and then main gain. So I'm the only one, the only one you think. Well, if I am, I'm the only one that actually makes sense. The only one that understands this. Thousands of years ago, if I'd have said the earth is round, probably would have been the only one. Everyone else would have said, sail that ship too far, you're going to fall off the edge of the earth. Be careful, the earth is flat. I would have been the only one. Would that mean I'm wrong? Would that mean I'm wrong? So just because I know more than most coaches, just because I'm more educated, doesn't mean I'm wrong. Just because you don't get it, maybe you're not smart enough to understand the concepts, you don't get it, doesn't mean I'm wrong. Tuss, you're gonna feel like even more shit on a cut. There you go, someone that makes sense, so it's not just mosquitoes. You're going to feel even worse on a cut. If you bulk up to feel good, what's going to happen when you go on that cut? Cutting is the opposite of bulking. If you feel good on a bulk, you feel bad on a cut. So why not solve the problem and main gain? Somewhere where you always feel good. If 6%, you don't feel good, go up to 12. Main gain from the point where you feel good and always feel good. Choose to always feel good rather than to get fluffy and not be happy with your physique and then do a mini cut, which is a real cut, and not like it. How many like to cut? The only reason the IP Pros cut is because we need to do it to win a show. We show up at 5.5% body fat and they say, what happened? Look at your physique. I mean, last place. Look at you. Five and a half percent. I mean, there's only three or four striations in your glutes. What did you do wrong? What happened? And you're thinking, well, uh, for this show, I didn't use DNP and I want it to be a bit healthier. It came in at five and a half percent. We're going to reward you with last place. How do you think that makes the pros feel? You're being judged on how you look for a living. Your livelihood depends on being shredded, not just shredded, bone dry, dehydrated, shredded, to the point of death. You think it's healthy to show up for an IB Pro show in the most extreme condition possible? You're risking your life. You think I want the average person to do what I've done to do bodybuilding shows? No, of course not. And I've never used DNP. I wouldn't use it. But trust me, a lot of people are using it. People die from it.
do you really want to die trying to get the physique of your dreams not worth it holly veggie if you felt like shit, you weren't at maintenance well actually you might be at maintenance but you might be at a maintenance that's too low for your own good when i'm at five percent body fat i can maintain that but i feel like shit the entire time so therefore i need to eat more increase my body fat so that i feel good again nine percent is my number the lowest number for me that i can maintain with my genetics tristan lee it's under five percent he has better genetics for being shredded than coach greg and other people it might be 20 percent. it might even be 30. you might not like that number but it's your number not everyone can maintain single digit body fat and main gain it depends on your genetics depends on your parents th3 rush 22 then you should gain the weight needed by eating those extra 200 calories and then keep that as your maintenance that's literally what greg said in the video he gets it see there's smart people in subreddit they get it they watch the video and they're like dude maybe you didn't watch the whole video he literally said you need to eat more if you feel like garbage and then main gain so thank you for pointing that out people if you see people that don't understand the methods the terminology please try to explain them i can't comment on every single post that i see you see me in the comment section posting all the time it's because i care i like to do that i like to help people i can't help everyone so please if you see somebody that doesn't understand just assume that they don't get it if you think of it as they're not a hater they just don't get it you'll be able to explain the answer without hate they literally might not be hating on me trying to shit on me they just don't get it they haven't seen enough videos they don't understand who knows they might be 12 we don't know how old these people are so they're making comments please try to help them makes sense i wasn't putting on any muscle before so i should hopefully notice some muscle synthesis with a little fat gain absolutely yes thank you so happy to read that comment again see you explained to him that you needed to eat more calories and then when you feel better then main gain he gets it i'm reading it now for the first time he gets it so you see how you can help people in the comment thread i read this for the first time I'm like they're attacking coach greg bunch of mosquitoes i get all offensive oh how dare you then i read i'm like wait a minute maybe they're 12 maybe they don't understand maybe they haven't actually even watched the whole video they watch three minutes turn it off to, i hate greg i used to like him when he was on steroids pds talking about that and he was shredded strong now he's old look he's lost all his muscle see how hard that is even i have to deal with that good thing i have a lot of confidence and can handle not having as much muscle and not being as lean as i used to because if it's hard for me imagine how it is for other people you see how bodybuilding can be a dangerous and slippery slope ham zaski main gaining sounds good in theory but is utter bs in practice no it, it literally works in practice patrick moore ifbb pro bodybuilder he literally posts before and after photos he's like look see how small my waist is see how i have abs year round he's main gaining he's not as lean as he is on stage when he's four percent body fat on stage at the olympia shred it but he's maybe eight nine percent in the off season he's main gaining at a higher level like coach greg so after the olympia show he eats more than main gains he doesn't grow up to 20 percent body fat and get bulky and puffy he gains weight and then when he feels healthy he main gains that is how he's doing he's an olympia competitor that's what most pro bodybuilders do you're just comparing ip pros when they're ridiculously shredded not healthy they can't maintain it if they could they would they like the way they look when they're four percent but it's not healthy it's not realistic they can't do it they have to suffer so much to get to that point point. and after three four months of hard dieting what do you think they do they do what you would do they go get fast food they're having their pizza they're having their mcdonald's whatever because they miss it they need it and then they get fatter and finally they feel good about themselves again physically they can sleep again their sex drive comes back yeah they can actually have sex again most pros can't have sex before a show they don't have the energy crushed estrogen you know what it's like i do 59 shows i be pro doing this my whole life but you're gonna listen to a 20 year old in the subreddit over coach reg with a master's in kinesiology does that make sense to you does it really make sense c g x e d u cook pick disagree with greg in this instance from experience 
I have tried main gaining and ended up wasting six months progress by just spinning my wheels, lift stalled, and I looked exactly the same. It's because he didn't eat enough. He was main gaining at too low of a level. Maybe he was 8% and he tried to main gain. Six months went by, didn't gain any muscle. Had he have eaten more, put his body fat at 12% and main gain from there, perhaps he would have gained all that muscle. Did it wrong. Same scenarios, Abby or Nier. Same scenarios, Thunshot. You're just trying to main gain at too lean a level. You have to stop trying to main gain at a level that is too lean for your body. Everyone has different genetics. You cannot try to main gain at a level that's too low for you. Rock hard cowpoke. Also, maintaining is horrible for occasional overeating episodes. <laughs> no, it's even better for that. You end up getting fatter from bursts of overeating, wedding event, beach trip, which are enough to put fat over time, but are too infrequent to build muscle from the surplus. Worst of both worlds. That makes absolutely no sense. Occasional overeating you think is what makes people overweight. A wedding, that once a month time when you go to a wedding or you eat too much at the beach, you think that overeating once a month or once a week is what's making the difference between being lean or obese? It's a daily problem. You're eating too much consistently. If you ate a massive meal at a wedding, eat a little bit less the next day or go for a walk. Is it that complicated? You think you have to meticulously count your calories every day? Oh, I had 2,700 a day. I need to bulk. I'm going to eat 2,741 calories now. Some days you might have 2,500. Others, 3,000. Averages out 2,750. If you had 4,000 calories at a buffet, at a wedding, eat 2,000 for a couple days, it'll balance itself out. Go for an extra walk, do a bit more cardio, balance it out. Look in the mirror and if you're going up in weight, you're eating too much. If you're getting fatter, you're eating too much. If you're getting leaner, you need to eat more. You just constantly track yourself. Every week, you just look in the mirror. It's not something where you stare at yourself for an hour and critique every little detail. You just look, are you happy? If the reflection looking back to you is what you like, you keep going from there. If it's getting too fat, if it's getting too big, eat a bit less. Getting too small, eat a bit more. Main gain, it really is that simple. 90210, I feel bad for all the people skinny as fuck saying they are main gaining. Exactly, I also do. Imagine these people are anorexic, they're under eating and they're trying to main gain. Makes no sense. They need to eat more and then main gain when they're at a happy and healthy weight for them. If you're too skinny, you're anorexic, you're starving yourself, stop trying to main gain. Makes no sense. And I never for once ever said to do that. Rewatch my video, start to finish, and then you'll get it. The video makes perfect sense. You simply need to watch the video in its entirety. Amen, Gian one. It's all right. He sold me that same lie. They didn't watch the video. They didn't get it. I was super lean, probably under 10% and was training extremely hard for months and saw no progress. Was too lean. Should have increased calories and main gained at a healthy weight. Clearly, if you're too lean, you're not going to have any energy. Same as when I'm at 5%. And if I try to main gain from there, I can't. I have never for once tried to suggest that you should try to main gain from a level that's too lean for your health. I've never done this and it pains me to read these comments from people that actually think I would support trying to convince people to be too lean for their health and to main gain. I do not promote unrealistic body images for people at all, ever. In fact, I do the opposite. The exact opposite. I encourage people to go halfway to their dream physiques. I don't tell people try to get 5% single digit body fat. I say, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. Ask all the people I'm coaching or have coached. Ask them, literally ask them. Say, what did Greg say when you said your goal is to be 8%? When you wrote your goal is to be 12%, what did he say to you? Did I actually say 15%, 20%, something realistic for you? Don't do it if you don't have energy. Ask them, all of them, every single one, ask them. Ask every person I've ever coached if I've told them to have an unrealistic body expectation. If I've promoted being too shredded trying to maintain it. The opposite, the exact opposite 
is what I do in all my videos. I wish I would have just entered a surplus right away and I could have made so much better gains. Yeah, I wish you had listened to me in the first place when I said try not to maintain a physique that you can't maintain. You need to have energy. You need to feel good. If you go to the gym and you don't have energy, you are not eating enough. You need to eat more. I say that every freaking video and it's pissing me off that you don't watch them. It hurts me to hear that you don't watch the videos and don't actually understand the message. It hurts me. I hope with this video, you finally get it, people. Finally get it. I don't want you to suffer and be shredded and try to main gain from there. Main gaining occurs at a weight that's healthy for you. Dude, mix that in with eating his low-fat stuff. Man, I have no sex drive currently. I'm crashed, LOL. I'm just waiting on a bulk because I want to go to the beach this summer and still have my abs. You have no idea how... You have no idea how much this saddens me that you didn't watch the video and understand what I'm trying to say. I also have no sex drive even on testosterone when I'm dying to that extent. The last month before a show... Your sex drive is next to nothing because you're too lean. And if you're natural, your testosterone levels are going to be even lower. You're not going to put on muscle. You can't main gain when you're too lean. Stop doing it. Haha, ha, yeah, I was also eating around 10 grams of fat a day, so I had no sex drive and just felt like shit in general. Obvious, how the heck do you only eat 10 grams of fat a day? What freaking diet are you following? I mean, do you know how hard it would be to only eat 10 grams of fat a day? I have more than 10 grams of fat in the wraps I eat. That's one meal. How do you eat so few grams of fat? Are you a fatophobe, scared of fat? Unbelievable. Clearly you don't have my cookbook. Clearly you don't watch my videos. How many times have I said I eat salmon? Healthy fats. You're not eating meat. How do you get only 10 grams of fat? How? Even if you're vegetarian, how do you do it? How are you getting, what protein source are you using? Are you eating meat? I don't understand. Light dressing, bread, how do you not get any fat? Unfreaking believable And no sex drive? Might be from only having 10 grams of fat. Probably from not eating enough calories. You think you could just get shredded, have energy, and have high test levels? If it was that easy, everyone would do it. Pro bodybuilders never be complaining. 5% body fat, it's all right, I have sex three times a day. No, you think that actually happens in the real world? I used to trust Greg, but I've come to believe he is full of shit when it comes to this advice. He is the only person who preaches this and it makes no sense. He said it would be clear after today's video and it wasn't. In come the band boys and send me out, just don't get it. Do you get it now? Nathan, do you get it now? Please tell me you get it. If you feel like shit, you need to eat more. If you can't put on muscle, you need to eat more. And then main gain when you're healthy. If you have no sex drive and you can't sleep and your test levels are crashed, you're clearly not eating enough and you need to eat more and then you main gain. I was a school teacher for 11 years and I was a special needs teacher for one year. And I get it, not everyone learns at the same rate. Not everyone understands the same examples. I hope this has cleared things up. Hope everyone can understand it. And the take home message here is this. If you feel like shit, you don't have energy, sex drive is low, you're not sleeping right, you're hangry, you can't main gain from there, you need to eat more. Then when you up your calories and your body fat goes up to a healthy point for you, then you can main gain and then it applies to you. You are in the situation, the scenario, the case study where you're not eating enough. If you already feel good and healthy and you feel great like me, keep doing what you're doing. If you're overweight, obese, not happy with everything, slowly lose weight, Till you're healthy and happy, and then main gain. Does that make sense? Does that now clear it up? If it doesn't, please write in the comments for further explanation. Either myself or I'm sure someone else will clarify what you need to do. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. GregDuset IP Pro. Watch one of the bloops. 
buy my freaking cookbook if you want delicious high volume meals to help keep you full to make it easier to diet on get the training book if you need a training plan there's several in there beginner intermediate advanced subscribe and click that bell button and until next time i am out